What started as a French power couple's messy divorce has morphed first into political scandal and now three years hard time for the husband, two for the wife. Jérôme Cahuzac was François Hollande's crusading budget minister who, while cracking down on tax evasion, was also stashing cash in Switzerland and Singapore. Now he's been sentenced. Next will come the appeal. Delano D'Souza has the story. A stunned Jérôme Cahuzac left the courthouse knowing his fate. Moments earlier, he was handed a three-year prison sentence for tax evasion and money laundering. His ex-wife too was found guilty and sentenced to two years behind bars. It's important the tribunal gave a firm and reasoned response to the facts, the likes of which I hope we will not see repeat itself. As budget minister in François Hollande's government, Jérôme Cahuzac led a crackdown against tax evasion. But then a French investigative website alleged that the man who was tasked to fight tax fraud was guilty of the very crime himself. He even went before the French National Assembly to proclaim his innocence. I do not have and I have never had a foreign bank account, not now and not in the past. The government initially stood by the minister. But a parliamentary inquiry was opened after Cahuzac admitted to stashing his cash. The trained plastic surgeon and his wife hid millions of euros in accounts in Switzerland, Singapore and the Isle of Man. In a rare move, President Hollande ordered ministers to publicly disclose their personal wealth, something considered private in France. It's an unforgivable act to lie about it. It's a disgrace to the French Republic, just as much as the crimes committed themselves. The defense team had argued Jérôme Cahuzac and his former wife should walk free because they paid back taxes and penalties worth around two and a half million euros. It was an argument that failed to sway the judge. The pair have now said they'd appeal. Well, for more, we usually have him on the line from the United States. Uh, former U.S. prosecutor Eric Lisan is in town. He teaches at uh, the prestigious uh, French business school HEC. Nice to see you in the flesh, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and on the day when we see the conviction of, uh, or the sentencing of, of uh, Jérôme uh, Cahuzac, what's your reaction to this verdict? Well, the sentence, I think, for the French is a significant one. Again, compared to standards of other countries, it's all rel relative. In the U.S., this would be considered a light sentence, but it's very important here where going to prison for somebody like this is something that's very symbolic in itself. But on the other hand, we have to remember the situation, the optics of it couldn't be worse. It's not just a case of tax evasion. It's not just a case of illegally stashing money received overseas. It's not even just a public corruption case. It's a case where this is the guy, the public official, who is tasked with leading the fight against tax evasion. As uh, nobody and lied about it saying. on the floor of parliament, as it, we saw. Exactly. And as you noted, this is something that's going to be replayed over and over. And the prosecutor said quite correctly to the judge, this has met, put the whole country uh, in, a, in a state of embarrassment. Eric, this case dates back to 2013. Now, since then, we have seen LuxLeaks with the revelations about all these corporations that legally don't pay tax. Uh, we've seen the Panama Papers on uh, how there are these sort of black holes where it's afterwards impossible to follow the money. With all that's happened since, would you say that uh, the fight against tax evasion is being won or is it Groundhog Day? I think it's better than it was. I think the recognition of the problem and the recognition of the means that are being used to evade taxes at an international level is more advanced today than it was 10, 15 years ago. Uh, the United States, I think, in many ways has sort of led that uh, sort of international awareness of it. Uh, we saw uh, the sort of the piercing of the secrecy laws in Switzerland uh, by the banks there for tax crimes. Uh, several years ago, the, the UBS cases, that was a huge deal. And now we see at the international level, countries realizing there's a lot of revenue being lost here because of these crimes. And so it takes on an extra significance. And, uh, and so I think we're slowly but surely going towards a path of greater enforcement. Towards a path of greater enforcement. And now the public is growing aware that sometimes there's sort of collusion, right, between politicians and business people, we've discovered Ireland had this thing called the double Irish where 
big corporations didn't virtually paid no tax. Luxembourg had its cozy deal. The U.S. has certain states where, uh, and more more of them, uh, where corporate tax is nil or close to nil. These are thorny issues of policy that have sort of bedeviled uh, enforcement for a long time because, in fact, there's sort of a competition among jurisdictions to attract businesses by offering lower tax rates. In the United States, this is this sort of race to the bottom in terms of having fewer requirements in terms of disclosure. But there has to be a line drawn between what is legitimate competition and what is just uh, pure and simply tax evasion. And these international agreements, and, the, and more importantly, the enforcement of these international agreements, are what is going to be necessary to truly address the problem. And one final point on this. The U.S. is always key in this because the dollar is the world's currency. President Trump, how's he going to be on this? That is a fascinating question. We, he should be very aggressive on it if we listen to some of his rhetoric. On the other hand, he himself might be the next Jerome Kahuzak. Kahuzak. Remember, it was inconceivable that anybody could be elected president that had never disclosed their own tax returns. And he is the first that has never done that. And, uh, and we're talking major tax returns. He supposedly had a, almost a billion dollars in losses that he claimed in a very controversial maneuver. So we don't know what he's going to do. All right, Eric Lisson, many thanks for being with us. Many thanks for stopping by. I hope to be back. All right, indeed.